Okay, so you tell me that you have seen the anti-Semitic videos that have been circulating on TikTok. I mean, one is looking like it stems from Quebec or even Montreal. And then we're noticing that more and more are circulating from all over the world, the United States. What do you make of this? What's your first reaction to this kind of content? Look, I think uh, we're very gratified that now there's a spotlight, at least in this moment on this content, but we're not surprised by it. It's not that this content was just generated uh, this past week and suddenly, you know, and now the world is, is at notice. This content has been there, has been there all, all along. We're not surprised to see anti-Semitic tropes and themes in online in online forum, whether it's it's TikTok or Facebook or Twitter, it's all, it's all there. I'm I'm gratified that now we're noticing it. How does it make you feel though to see it again? Nonetheless, although you say it's it's not a surprise, it's still there, and it seems like the people behind them are young people. And so, what does that say to you? And and how do you feel just seeing something like that, something so horrific, making fun of you know Holocaust survivors? Look, there are many things in this world that are simply there and have been there all along, and just that we're noticing it right now. This is the phenomenon of living in, in, in the 21st century. After the 20th century, in which anti-Semitism was, was the pandemic of the century, killing millions and millions and millions of people, and, and we didn't get our vaccine for it. We didn't solve it. It's, it's still here. And the fact that people are posting, still posting these ideas online and posting under their actual names, not hiding their identities, not not a fearful of any of any repercussions. That's a very serious problem for us, and we're not surprised to see new instances of anti-Semitic videos or sentiments online. What does that do to the community who you know is just harmfully you know scrolling through TikTok and can come across a video or videos like the one we we saw? What does that do, and how does that almost re-traumatize the community? Our community has, has never been hidden from the effects of, of anti-Semitism. The attack that happened on our synagogue a few weeks ago, it, it wasn't a surprise. It didn't come, come from nowhere. We have a sophisticated security system in, in place, as does the entire Jewish community, because we know that these ideas are out there. When we read them, when we, we see them on, on social media, of course, it's, it's terrify, terrifying, but not in a, a shocking, surprising, where did this come from? Like we, know, we know it's always been there. What exactly happened at your synagogue? We saw it in the news a couple of weeks ago. Describe to me what you saw. At our synagogue a few weeks ago, uh, a man came up to the building, proceeded to draw swastikas on, on the four central front doors of, of the congregation, the symbol of, of Nazi Germany, the symbol of death to the Jews. And uh, he had with him the equipment to, to commit arson. And in fact, made that statement, that declaration that that was that was his intent. And there has been an arrest in this case? There has been arrest, an arrest. From what we're told, he's still in custody and still undergoing psychiatric evaluations. Does an incident like this make you think, okay, this is giving rise to an increase in these type of hate crimes? Or do you think this is just another day? I think it's important that, that we speak out against this. I think it's important that when something like this happens, the whole world says this is this is unacceptable, and it gives us a reason to, to look deeper into some of the causes and try to guess and try to try to divine why exactly this person would be drawn to this particular this particular act. You know, we were blessed with a lot of sentiments of solidarity that came from from all over, and with the good, with the bad comes the good, and sometimes with the good comes the bad. So, for example, the prime minister tweeted a message of solidarity and and quoted or tagged our congregation and tagged me in that tweet, which means that we see all the responses. And in those hundreds and thousands of responses, there is so much good, but there are also people who are coming out and saying some very, very hateful thing and, uh, things, and they're not afraid to say it, not afraid when something bad happens to, to almost heap it on and blame the victims and, and justify the actions because of some ideas that they have that pertain to, to global politics, that, that pertain to the role of the Jew in the world, and it's unacceptable. So where do we go from here? How do we fix this and you know, get rid of these ideas that are still around? Well, it's really important that we're monitoring the online sites, that we're monitoring comment sections on, on local media. That's essential. And that's where much of the hate has, has, has been found in, in Montreal on the local media sites. 
uh, it's important as well that leaders continue to speak out against this because the role of leaders can't be understated in terms of establishing that this is unacceptable, that anti-Semitism in any form that it comes, whether it's on, on campus, whether it's in a newspaper, whether it's in the comments section, whether it's online and TikTok and social media, wherever it is, it is absolutely unacceptable. And do the, the social media platforms you find uh, have a role in this as well? I mean, it looks like they're trying to police this as much as possible, but you know, how can we do this on such a vast platform? It's a great question. I don't have the solution to that. I don't envy the, those who are, well, those who are reaping the benefits and the riches of social media. They have the responsibility to, to make sure that their platforms are not used to promote hatred and to promote, promote violence. That's a very serious accusation. It's a very serious responsibility. With, with great achievement comes, comes that responsibility. So I, I don't have the answer for them, but just know that it absolutely needs to be addressed. What do you say finally to those who are posting these um, racist and insensitive videos, not knowing the magnitude of you know, the, what they're talking about? This is the responsibility of our educational system to make sure that people are not ignorant of the, of the horrors that happen and that they know that hateful words and, and that silly jokes that contain with them, within them very serious conspiracy theories about the role of of Jews in the world and the Jews in power and what the Jews are influenced and that we were aware as well of the political voices that, that come from all sides, from both the right and the left that perpetuate these very same concepts about, about Jews and about our role in, in the world. The educational system is essential in making sure that before a person posts a video that they're aware of where words can lead, where these ideas and where these these theories can actually lead to, to real violence as, as we, we've experienced throughout our history and even as recently as a few weeks ago at our synagogue. Thank you so much, Rabbi, I appreciate it.